Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to take Excel ranges and copy them over from the Excel application into a Word document. So a couple videos ago, I explained and walked through how we can take Excel charts and copy those objects over to a Word document. Well, we're gonna continue on with that series and now we're gonna move over to Excel ranges. And so what we're gonna do in this first part of the video is we're actually just gonna focus on a single Excel range. So we're gonna take a single Excel range, copy it over to a Word document, and then in the next video of this series, we are going to deal with multiple Excel ranges and we can kind of deal with a more complicated problem. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in our Visual Basic Editor. So we're gonna go up to our Visual Basic icon. And from here, uh, a couple things we usually have to do every time we're interacting with some application that is outside of Excel is we have to enable uh, some type of library so that way we can leverage IntelliSense and we can create these different objects within the Excel application. Well, in this particular example, we have to make a reference to the Word object library. And so how we do that is we're going to go up to the top of our VBA editor. So right up here, at the top ribbon. We're going to click tools down to references okay well i currently have my word object library enabled now if this is the first time you're using the word object library you're not going to see it right up here at the top you're going to have to scroll down and so you're going to scroll down nice thing is they're in alphabetical order you're going to go down to microsoft and then you're going to go to w t u v w perfect so it's going to be somewhere right around here. And when you come across it, all you got to do is check that box. So when you check it, it will enable that library. Now, you might see a different number here than what you're seeing on my screen. All that means is you're just doing a different version of the Word library. So you might be on an earlier version of Office. Now, what we're going to do in today's video, it's not going to matter. Uh, everything should be version compatible unless you're going back really, really far to like, you know, way back. But for most people, in fact, I'm pretty sure everyone, everything we're going to do in today's video should work regardless of your version. So you just want to make sure you check it. And then after you check it, you can press OK. And then from here, now we can actually start writing our subroutine. So I'm going to create a new subroutine and I'm going to call it copy range to Word, and I'll make a little note to myself, this is just a single range. And there are gonna be certain Word objects that I want to manipulate in this particular program. So in order to manipulate those objects, I'm gonna store them in a variable. Well, I need to define those variables at the beginning of my program. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to declare my Word variables. And I'm going to create two. The first one will be called the Word app. And this will be the Word application. So just like Excel is an application, Word is an application. So we're going to create an object variable that will house that application. And then in Excel, we have worksheets. So these worksheets live within our particular uh, workbook. And that workbook lives within our particular um, application. Well, in this particular example, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create uh, a workbook per se in the Word application, but we don't call them workbooks. We call them documents. And so we need a variable that will house our documents. So we're going to call that Word doc. And this will be a Word document object. And then from here, we need to declare one last group of variables, and it's just going to be an Excel variable. And so I'm going to say declare my Excel variables. And this is just going to be called Excel range. And it's simply going to reference a range object or a range of cells. And then from there, we can do things like copy and stuff like that. And then so since we now have declared our variables, we're going to now create a new instance of Word. Because if you look right down here at my bar, you see that Word is definitely not open. So we need to create a new instance of Word so that it's open. Now, when we do this, technically what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's visible and we can actually see it. 
but you don't technically have to do that. You, you can always create your instance of Word kind of like in the background. No icon will pop up and it won't be visible to you, but it doesn't mean, stop you from manipulating that object. But in this example, we're going to actually make it where we can see it. So I'm going to set my Word app equal to a new Word application. And then I'm going to make sure that the visible property of my Word application is equal to true. So this will make sure that I can actually see my application. And then I want it to be the main window in my actual system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the activate method. And so this will bring it to the front of my system. So that way it's the front screen right here after it creates it. And then from here, when we actually run it, you'll see something, but uh, it's basically like an empty shell. So as you can see, we've now created a Word document, well, a Word op application, but there's no document inside of it. So it's kind of just this outer shell. We need to populate that shell with a document. And so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to create a new document in the application. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set that Word doc equal to the Word app. And then inside our application, there is something called the documents collection. So again, just like in Excel, we can have a workbooks collection that contains all the workbooks that are open in Excel. We can have a documents collection that contains all the documents that are currently opened within Word. And then within that collection, there is a method called add, and this will add a new document. So that way we can now play around with it. And so from here, when I run it, you'll see that looks a little bit more normal uh, like we're used to seeing. So here now we have a document and it lives within our Word application. Great. So from here, uh, we're going to move on to kind of the, the next section where we need to actually go and reference the range that we want to copy and then copy it. So we're going to create a reference to the range we want to copy. So that means we're going to set the Excel range equal to the active sheet and then dot range. And then I'm going to pass through the range that I want to copy. And just so you can clearly see, I'm going to be copying this range right here. So this is currently on sheet one. This is my active sheet. So if I go back to my code, I'm calling my active sheet. So that's just the sheet that we have currently selected. And then within our sheet, there are different ranges of cells. Well, I am specifying to copy this particular range of cells that belongs to this active sheet. Now, technically speaking, I don't have to have it there, but I like to make sure I'm a little bit formal sometimes. And I've also run into instances where if we're not very explicit in how we define it, uh, that actual copying process can be a little bit unstable. It doesn't mean the code is wrong, but Word and Excel just kind of have a hard time talking to each other. And so I kind of noticed that, you know, as long as we're pretty explicit with how we actually specify stuff, it tends to work pretty smoothly. And then from here, we want to copy the range. And so we're going to set the Excel range, and I'm going to call the copy method. So it's going to be stored in my clipboard. But sometimes a problem happens where it doesn't actually make it in there, and we've experienced this in other videos. So a good habit to get into is to pause the application. So in other words, give it enough time to actually take that range, copy it, and put it in the clipboard. Especially if you're doing a lot of cells, you almost always have to do this because it will move too quickly, and it never actually makes it to the clipboard. And so when you try to go and paste it, you're going to get this error message saying, what am I supposed to be pasting? There's nothing in the clipboard. Well, by pausing the application, uh, we're going to make sure that it actually makes it in to the clipboard. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my application object. Now, this is my Excel application, not my Word application. And the Excel application has a method called wait. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the current time that it currently is, and I'm going to basically just add two seconds to it. That's it. So that's how you read this. Basically, take whatever time it is and then add two seconds to it and just pause it that amount of time. 
that almost is always enough time unless you're again you're doing some outrageously large amount of cells you might need to pause it longer but generally one to two seconds is all you need so this will pause our application make sure that it makes it in to our word doc i mean sorry into our clipboard so that way when we go and copy it into word everything's fine okay and then from here paste the object in word and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call my word document and inside my document there is something called paragraphs and so again you can kind of think of this as uh, you know inside your workbook you have worksheets well inside your documents you have paragraphs and what i'm going to do is i'm going to specify one of the paragraphs in my particular word document well i'm going to just select the first paragraph and then there's a range property that belongs to each paragraph and within our range property, there is something called paste Excel table. Now you could technically do paste special and everything like that. I'll do that in the next video just to, again, provide variety and see it done different ways. But in this example, I'm going to use the paste Excel table method. And with this one, there's a couple different parameters we can pass through. The first one is called linked to Excel. And so this will just, you know, like it says, it's going to create a link to Excel. The next one is word formatting. So do you want it formatted in the word standard? Well, we'll try it out, see what happens. And then uh, RTF, I think it's rich text format or something like that. So if you, if you choose this one, it's gonna paste it as a rich text format. Otherwise it's gonna do HTML. Again, it's just more formatting than anything. Uh, and so in this one, I'll just say false. I'll just keep it to whatever the standard is. And then from here, Again, just to be safe and consistent, I'm going to actually clear my clipboard. Uh, you know, most time you don't have to do this, uh, but I do notice that sometimes if I try to rerun the script and I don't actually run the clear my clipboard, sometimes, not always, uh, it just kind of freaks out a little bit and it's like, wait a minute, what are you trying to do? And then so I'm just going to, again, go into my application object. And then I'm gonna say cut copy mode is equal to false. And this will basically just make sure there's nothing in there. Okay, so let's just again, take a quick look. We declared our variables. We created a new instance of Word. We added a document. We created a reference to the range. We copied it. We paused our application. And now we're gonna actually uh, paste it into Word. Uh, I'll just do it just to kind of show you, but I kind of don't like the paste Excel table method. So as you can see, it, it puts it in there, but I notice that sometimes it, it's just the formatting gets really weird sometimes. And so, I don't know, it, it, it does it. So in this situation, so we put it to, you know, true, right? So it did whatever the formatting I had in, uh, in Word. I'll show it again, just to be consistent. Okay, so it, it it put it in the the table format that is for Word. So it took whatever format was in Excel, got rid of it, and then now it did this. You know, most time not really an issue, but then I noticed that these little highlighting stuff right here, I don't know why it carries this over. It's really weird. I'm not sure entirely why it's doing that, but it, it does seem to kind of play a role in it. And then even if I put it to false, it still kind of copies over that little gray stuff. And I'm not really sure what goes on there. So, you know, some people have different experiences with it. And so I've had people do it before where it's like, there's no issues whatsoever. I've had other people where it's like, they kind of run into the same errors that I run into. And so, you know, I hate to kind of be that bearer of bad news. I guess it really just depends. You'll see in the next video that if we do an OLE object, we don't really run into this error. So even though this is a method that we kind of have at our disposal, it seems to be very unstable. And so again, I'm demonstrating it to people just so that way they see it. But keep in mind, if you get the result that I'm currently getting, you're gonna wanna watch the next video because we're gonna do it a little bit differently and we're gonna see that we, we can kind of avoid that. So, uh, you know, let's just change it again and I'll put this equal to, uh, you know, false or something like that, just to show that, hey, the link does actually get removed. No, oh, we'll see, I guess that, see, I guess that might be it. 
maybe it's the link. Maybe if you have a link, it, it gets rid of the gray stuff. So <laughs> I guess now we're seeing that maybe it's working fine. So I guess maybe if you pass through the link, uh, maybe that's why it's passing through the little gray highlights. Again, really strange, really weird. Don't really understand why it's doing it, but at least now you've kind of seen that, well, there is a way to get rid of it. You're not going to have to, you're not going to be able to have a link, unfortunately, but you can paste it over as a table and, uh, you know, it'll work fine. So that, uh, that does it for today's video. If you have any questions about, you know, how to copy over ranges to Word or, you know, anything like that, you know, please put them down in the comments below. Also, if you can make sure to like the video, always helps out a bunch and we always appreciate the support. And then also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so that way you're getting the regular updates, uh, you know, as we're releasing new videos. So you wanna make sure you subscribe and then you uh, turn on the notifications. Cause again, we're trying to put out different types of videos so that way you guys kind of get a variety of, you know, different languages we can cover. So in the next video, we're gonna cover how to take multiple ranges and copy them over to Excel. So that's for the next video. Thanks again, guys.